We're the Motor Doctors, and we're sponsored by AVB. I'm Patrick. I worked on the test setup and PCB design. I'm Sydney. I'm the team leader, and I worked on the sensors and data collection parts. Hi, my name is Will, and I was here, and I worked on the uh, algorithm. My name is Chandler James, and I also help with the um, sensors and data collection uh, and analysis. Hello, and my name is Will Tichy, and I did the website um, as well as the power management system. Our product was to design a low-cost device that monitors our motor health and predicts barreling failure in advance. Uh, we're sponsored by ABB and uh, here's some of the research for our product. Uh, we noticed that these bearings would um, be one of the main causes of motor failure and the other most common cause is overload. We wanted to be able to detect that um, so we uh, implemented a accelerometer and temperature sensor to detect these different failure modes. In order to test our product we had a, a test set up over here. We have our motor under test that we would be putting our device on, uh, a motor acting as a load and and various control circuitry and uh, equipment to uh, run the whole thing. To implement our product, we had our PCB. Uh, it consists of an AC-DC converter. Uh, we're powering this off of the motor windings uh, it's so that it will not have to be powered by any external source. Uh, we have our sensor package over here, which consists of our accelerometer and temperature sensor. And we have our microcontroller that does our data analysis and uh, uh, alerts the user for when the motor eventually fails. Um, um, on the motor over here, we have um, our PCB mounted around the front casing, right where that bearing is going to be. Uh, this bearing, uh, when it fails, uh, will produce a lot of excess vibration, and we want it to be as close to that as possible. Here's where we're actually collecting the data. This was, um, for testing purposes, exported over a serial line, um, but all of our uh, actual detection algorithm was running on chip. Here's the results from uh, the frequency analysis. Uh, here's from our test bench data and here's the graph that uh, shows what's happening on the chip. Uh, we wanted to make sure that these were one and the same uh, for when we were testing our product and as you can see they were. Uh, the different frequency responses that we had under different uh, loading conditions. Uh, for the healthy motor, we saw only two peaks due to um, just like normal operating conditions. But uh, when we had uh, failed bearings put in there, such, a, such as uh, when we had pitted bearings, which is running DC current through it and it would cause uh, different uh, pittings along the outside. We contaminated it with some sand and we also took out grease. All of these would uh, increase the uh, uh, frequencies that we would uh, detect in a second. This is on this graph here. Uh, as you can see, we have a one really large peak around 2,000 hertz, and this is what we were really looking at to detect when the motor was about to fail. Uh, as soon as we saw that, we would uh, put this LED to amber to indicate, hey, you need to uh, change out this motor, change out the bearing, and uh, make sure that there's no downtime from uh, the motor. Here's where we directly compare those two bearings. This one, you can see our healthy bearing moves very smoothly, and our decreased bearing uh, does not uh, operate nearly as smoothly. Uh, it will cause excess vibration. It has uh, a large increase in temperature as well. Um, and here's a direct comparison between the two. Again, we have these two peaks of the healthy motor, um, but at a very small amplitude. But as soon as we switched over to the failing motor bearings, we had one large peak and the other two peaks over here are basically non-existent on this graph. And we would turn up the LED to red and the, uh, once that happens.